As a vlogger and content creator who's constantly on the go, I look for four key features in my ideal camera. And those four features are image quality, audio quality, stabilization, and ease of use. Oh, and they also have to be pocket sized or compact and relatively affordable. I don't want to spend a ton of money on them. So in this video, I'm going to talk about five brand new cameras that came out in 2023 that check all of those boxes. We'll talk about all of the features and qualities, and there will be lots of unedited sample footage from each camera, so you can see for yourself how they look and sound. So now I'm going to do an introduction of each camera using the actual camera itself to film. So this is the iPhone 15 Pro, and I went with the Pro version as opposed to the regular version because the Pro version does have an additional lens, and I didn't go with the Max because it is a lot bigger and more expensive. So for me personally, the iPhone 15 Pro is the best phone of the new iPhones. Next up is the DJI Pocket 3, which is a tiny camera on a gimbal, which is a physical stabilizer. It's the only camera out of these five that actually comes with a gimbal, so it comes with all the benefits of a gimbal, such as the ability to do motion time lapses and track your subjects. Next up is the GoPro Hero 12 Black, which is an action camera, and it's actually been my preferred vlogging camera for the past six years, ever since I started vlogging. It has incredible image quality and stabilization, and it's really good for vlogging if you didn't already know that. But there's actually a competitor, the DJI Osmo Action 4, which also came out this year right before the Hero 12 Black did, and it's a very worthy competitor. In some cases, it matches up to or even beats out the GoPro. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in this video. And the final camera is the Sony ZV-1 Mark II, which is the updated version of the older, very popular Sony ZV-1. It is the only point-and-shoot style camera on this list. If it feels like I just made this video several months ago, well, I actually did. But since then, each one of these cameras except for one has been updated. So I'm gonna do it again, but this time focusing on four main features aimed at vloggers and content creators, since many of these cameras already have their own deep dive comparison videos, which I'll link below. Also, this video is not sponsored, but the DJI cameras were gifted and I had the Sony on temporary loan. I paid for the rest of these cameras, but I am under no obligations to make this video. I'm making it because I think that these are currently the best compact cameras on the market and I genuinely want to know which one is best for making my travel vlogs and videos. We're going to jump right into it with image quality, looking at resolution and dynamic range, as well as zoom range and autofocus and bokeh capabilities, and which of these cameras makes your face look the best, because not all of them do. Now starting with resolution, all of the cameras on this list can shoot at least 4K video and both RAW and JPEG photos. Now based on specs alone, the GoPro Hero 12 Black is the only camera that can shoot in 5.3K 60 frames per second regular video, but the DJI Osmo Action 4, the Pocket 3, and the iPhone 15 Pro all cap out at 4K 60 frames per second normal video, while the Sony ZV-1 Mark II caps out at 4K 30 frames per second. Now for most of us, 4K or even 1080p resolution will suffice considering the amount of storage and processing power that it takes to shoot and edit 5K video. But one of the benefits of shooting in 5K in the GoPro is being able to shoot in the 8-7 aspect ratio so that you can crop your video in vertical or horizontal orientation in post-production. That's something that you can't do with the rest of these cameras. But specs aside, let's see how the image quality looks in real life. In harsh lighting with all of the cameras set to normal color video, I actually like the iPhone 15 Pro's look the most. The lighting appears very even and I don't see any borderline hotspots like I do on the rest of the images. I think GoPro comes in in second place based on image quality looks alone. But of course, this is based on taste. Now as a bonus, three of these cameras can shoot in HDR or high dynamic range video. The iPhone 15 Pro, the GoPro Hero 12 Black, and the DJI Pocket 3. Once again, I'm preferring the iPhone's look for best preserving highlights and sharpness. Now all five of these cameras can shoot in log or a flat color profile that must be color graded in post-production. It's hard to judge log quality as it really depends on your particular taste and how you like to color grade your footage, but it's nice to have that feature on all of these cameras. Now all five of these cameras can also shoot in slow motion video, and again, GoPro tops the list in terms of resolution, since it's the only one that can shoot in 4K 120 frames per second slow-mo and in 2.7K 240 frames per second super slow motion. The DJI Pocket 3 and the Osmo Action 4 can also shoot in 4K 120, but their super slow motion is still capped at 1080p. 
Next for image quality, let's talk about zoom range and bokeh. All of these cameras have built-in lenses, so you can't exactly change them, but there are a few ways to modify them of sorts. Now, without adding modifiers, the GoPro, the DJI Osmo Action 4, and the iPhone 15 Pro have the widest fields of view, but the GoPro Hero 12 has the absolute widest if you add the $100 Max Lens Mod 2.0 and shoot in Max Hyperview. Even though it is the widest, the image can be a little warped, so do be aware of how you use it. The DJI Pocket 3 can also go to 15 millimeters if you add on the wide angle lens, which is included in the creator combo or you can purchase it separately. The lens is quite small and it attaches magnetically with a respectably strong hold, but it can get knocked off. So make sure to keep an eye on it if you use it. Of these cameras, the Sony ZV-1 Mark II has the narrowest field of view, going as wide as 18 millimeters with steady shot stabilization turned off. Still, it's more or less wide enough for handheld vlogging, and because it's not the widest, it doesn't have any side distortion. When it comes to zoom, both the GoPro and the DJI Osmo Action 4 come in last. They can sort of zoom in with their digital lenses, and when shooting in 5K on the GoPro, you can even crop in post-production, but you don't quite get the same effect as zooming in camera. The DJI Osmo Action 4 and the Pocket 3 also have digital zoom toggles, but it does degrade the image quality quite a bit, so I personally don't recommend using them. So when it comes down to the iPhone and the Sony, the iPhone can zoom in pretty far, especially if you use digital zoom. But again, I really think it degrades the image quality enough that I wouldn't go that far with it. So for usable footage, the iPhone is capped at 77 millimeters or the three times zoom. Meanwhile, the Sony's built-in zoom goes to 50 millimeters, but thanks to a special Sony technology called clear image zoom, you can zoom in even further and the image quality doesn't break down. So in my opinion, Sony wins the zoomed in test. Now for macro or super close-up shooting, again, the action cameras are out of the race. Both of them can't get very close to their subjects. But the DJI Pocket 3, the iPhone 15 Pro, and the Sony can. In my opinion, the Sony wins this one, not only for its minimum focusing distance, but also the higher image quality from that shot. Now the same holds true for bokeh shots. The action cameras can't do them straight out of the camera, but the Pocket, the iPhone, and the Sony can. Now this can be good if you want that blurred out background effect. I think the iPhone actually does it the worst though, because at times the bokeh just looks fake. I mean, just look at the weird halo effect around my head. It looks like Photoshop gone wrong. But the Pocket 3 produces really great bokeh, especially when you have the new product showcase mode enabled. But once again, I think Sony takes the cake here because it has a dedicated background defocus button, and it has the product showcase mode too. It was actually first. But bokeh or a blurred out background effect can also be bad if your subject is out of focus. Next up is an autofocus test. So not all of these cameras have autofocus. The action cameras, the DJI and the GoPro are both so wide that it doesn't really matter. Pretty much you're always in focus for them. So we're gonna test out autofocus on the Sony, the DJI Pocket 3, and the iPhone 15 Pro. Now the iPhone, the Pocket 3, and the Sony all have autofocus modes, including continuous autofocus. They can also track subjects moving in front of the camera, with the Pocket 3 doing this the best because the gimbal can physically move the camera around to follow a subject. Finally, let's talk about how each of these cameras make a face look, which is especially important for fellow vloggers and content creators out there. Now off the bat, all of these cameras make faces look the best when shooting in log, since that image reduces overall sharpness and gives you more control over the colors and the contrast. But you have to color grade log footage, and not all of us want to add more to our workflows. So let me also talk about how these cameras make a face look when shooting in normal video. So first, I'm going to rate the iPhone as the worst when it comes to shooting in normal video, mainly because you have zero control over some of the key features for making your face look good, such as sharpness and skin smoothing. Meanwhile, the GoPro and the DJI Osmo Action 4 don't have skin smoothing effects. They at least let you control the amount of sharpness levels in your camera, and I always have mine set to low or zero sharpness. 
Now the Sony doesn't have sharpness control either, but the DJI Pocket 3 does. And both of those cameras actually take this whole thing further by letting you control your skin smoothness. Sony lets you do it in camera, while the Pocket 3 lets you do it in two ways. Number one, by adding a black mist filter, which also softens harsh lighting and creates a dreamlike effect in your shots. All right, there we go. So now with the black mist filter on the Pocket 3, there we go. Yeah, I do see that softening the light quite a bit, so that's a really nice effect that it has there. The Pocket 3 can also Photoshop your face if you connect the camera to the DJI Mimo phone app. In that app, you can change even more things on your face and even add makeup via the app. Now, not everyone is gonna find these facial photoshopping effects to be attractive, but I like having them there as an option. I mean, for me personally, it means I have to wear less makeup on camera, and who doesn't like that? When it comes to low light shooting with just these cameras not adding any accessories, the DJI Pocket 3 is the clear winner since it not only has a one inch sensor in camera, but also a gimbal. So you're getting an ultra stable low light image. The rest of these cameras really need a gimbal to make them more stable in low light. They really suffer from that shaky footage. Even the Action 4 and the iPhone, like they look pretty bright in low light, but that shakiness is really no good. Although, GoPro does have a computer-based stabilization program called Real Steady. Now you have to shoot your footage with stabilization turned off, which can be a little scary, but if you run it through Real Steady, it actually does a really great job of adding that stabilization in post-production. So it's nice to have just in case, but even then, I still think the overall image quality is a bit shabby in low light. It's really dark compared to the rest of these cameras here. Now, Sony also has a way to add stabilization in post-production in the form of Catalyst Browse, which is a computer program, but honestly, I don't think it works too well in low lighting, but it does much better if you have enough lighting. So I'll talk a little bit more about Catalyst Browse later on, since we're now on the topic of stabilization. So let's deep dive into that. When shooting in ample lighting, I think the action cameras take the cake here. They both have built-in stabilization. That's hyper smooth for GoPro and rock steady for the DJI Osmo Action 4. And both of those work super well when you have enough lighting. They do crop into your shot just a little bit, but because these cameras are so wide, like you don't even notice that there's a crop. I honestly think these action cameras are even smoother than the DJI Pocket 3, because even though that camera has a gimbal to stabilize the footage, gimbals do that at the expense of adding a bit of a bob when you're walking. So built-in stabilization to me is still better because it more or less eliminates that gimbal bob. The iPhone also has great built-in stabilization when shooting with the ultra wide lens, or it gets even better if you activate action mode, which is on the iPhone 14 and the 15. Now, even though action mode reduces your resolution to 2.8K, you can't shoot in 4K, and it also crops into your shot pretty noticeably, action mode adds a lot of stabilization and it makes it more feasible to shoot handheld with the iPhone. While the Sony does have built-in stabilization in the form of steady shot, it's really no match for the built-in stabilization on the rest of these cameras. Basically, you don't want to run or do hardcore action with the Sony, unless you use Catalyst Browse. So I mentioned it earlier, but it's a free computer-based software that lets you add stabilization to your video only if you shot it with stabilization turned off. So it's a bit of a gamble to use, but honestly, it works pretty well. Again, it's not as good as using a gimbal or the stabilization that's built into the action cameras, but it's pretty darn good. GoPro's Real Steady program also does a great job of stabilizing in post-production, and you can even add horizon leveling and change your field of view using Real Steady. Now at the moment, Apple and DJI both don't have stabilization computer programs. For now, we'll stay tuned and see if that changes in the future. Now let's move on to audio. So all of these cameras have built-in microphones and you can also plug in your own external microphone. Let's hear what these cameras sound like without any accessories. This is a microphone test using the built-in microphones on the GoPro Hero 12 Black. I'm standing in front of the camera. The camera is about an arm's length away and we do have wind reduction turned on. So this is what it sounds like. I'm gonna go ahead and flip the camera now in the opposite direction. Now I'm standing behind the camera, and this is what it sounds like using those built-in internal microphones of the GoPro Hero 12 Black. This is an audio test of the DJI Osmo Action 4 using the built-in internal microphones. I'm standing in front of the camera. The camera is about an arm's length away, and this is what it sounds like. I'll also go ahead and rotate the camera. 
So now I am standing behind the DJI Osmo Action 4, still using those built-in internal microphones, and this is what it sounds like. This is an audio test of the DJI Pocket 3 using the built-in internal microphones. I am standing on the side with the built-in display and also the joystick and the buttons. So this is what it sounds like. Now I'm going to turn the camera around. And this is what it sounds like if I'm standing on the other side of the camera. A little bit of wind coming through, so a good test to hear how that wind reduction is taking effect. And this is an audio test using the built-in internal microphones on the iPhone 15 Pro. And I'm standing behind the camera, so we're actually using the back-facing camera, that ultra-wide lens. This is what it sounds like. I will go ahead and spin the camera around in the opposite direction. And this is what it sounds like if I'm standing behind the camera using those built-in mics on the iPhone 15 Pro. And this is a sound test using the Sony ZV-1 Mark II's built-in microphones. I've got the little furry windscreen on top and it's an omnidirectional microphone so we've got it set to all directions. And so this is what it sounds like if I'm standing in front of the camera. But I'll also go ahead and rotate the camera in the opposite direction. So now I'm standing behind the camera and this is what it sounds like. The camera's about an arm's length away and this is the audio quality coming out of this camera's microphones. So wind is really the biggest enemy of these cameras, and the only camera that I think sounds good in the face of wind is the Sony ZV-1 Mark II. Probably because it comes with a fluffy windscreen to guard the mic, and it actually does a really good job. The rest of these cameras really need some kind of help to sound good if there's any wind. One cool thing about the GoPros is that you can actually add a media mod to the GoPro Hero 9, 10, 11, and 12. It's the same media mod, and that media mod actually has built-in microphones that you can use. So right now I have that built-in mic. It's got a little foam uh, wind protector on it, which actually offers even more protection against the wind. And we have it set to front and back sensitivity, which is a new feature added to the Hero 12. It was present on, I believe it was the Hero 9, but they took it out for the Hero 10 and 11. So it's nice to see that feature back because if I spin the camera around in the opposite direction, now I'm standing behind it, and that foam protection is gonna offer us some good wind protect protection. And the other nice thing about this media mod is that it's got a 3.5 millimeter microphone jack and also a cold shoe mount for attaching your own external microphone. But the real winner here, in my opinion, is the DJI Pocket 3 because the Creator Combo comes with a wireless transmitter and that pretty much always gives you the best audio quality. And this is a sound test now using the DJI Mic 2 transmitter. So I have it connected wirelessly and this is what it sounds like. It's got that fluffy windscreen on top and one of the benefits is that I can rotate the camera in another direction and I should still be heard pretty evenly because I've got this wireless transmitter mic directly below my mouth. But speaking of wireless microphone systems, you can add one to any of these cameras. The Pocket 3 is just the only one that has one included in the camera kit. My final vlogging camera quality is ease of use, and all of these cameras have a bit of a learning curve. Even the iPhone, like you might think you know how to use the camera, but there's always new features being added or moved around. But I will say that for most of us, the iPhone or smartphone camera would be the one that's most intuitive for us to use, since it's probably the camera that you use the most often. The iPhone is also IP68 rated, meaning it can be submerged in fresh water for up to 30 minutes at a depth of 6 meters. So no worries if you get it a little wet. From there, I'll say that the GoPro is the next easiest to use because the Hero 11 and 12 now come with an optional easy mode to give you the most minimal settings to get started right away. Or you can unlock Pro mode to unveil more settings if you want to fiddle with them. The DJI Osmo Action 4 also has easy and Pro modes. And in a lot of ways, I think its menu is more intuitive and easier to use than GoPros. So based on their simple menus, the fact that they're the cheapest cameras on this list, and they're also very hard to damage, I consider these to be the most practical and easy to use point and shoot cameras for everyday users, especially those of us who might get a little rough on their gear. Now, even though the DJI Pocket 3 more or less has the same menu as the Action 4, I think it's slightly harder to use because it has a gimbal. And even though gimbals provide physical stabilization, they take some getting used to. There's multiple gimbal modes and settings, and you also have to learn how to move with the gimbal to get the best looking shots. It's not terribly hard, but it's not super easy either. Again, it takes a bit of upfront investment to learn how to do it right. 
And finally, I do think that the Sony ZV-1 Mark II is the hardest camera to learn how to use because its menu is rather complex and it can look really intimidating if you've never used a Sony camera before. With that said, the menu is complex because there is so much you can do with this tiny camera and it has a bunch of pro-level features like a built-in ND filter. That is so cool to have in a camera. So it's a camera that you can grow into. And once you master the Sony ZV-1 Mark II, you can pick up pretty much any other pro-level Sony camera and learn to use it pretty quickly. So if you really want to deep dive into photography or videography with a real camera, I would say that the Sony is a great way to get started. So in conclusion, which of these cameras is the best? It's a tough call because each one has their own strengths and weaknesses, and they're all getting very expensive. Like these are no longer cheap cameras. Now, honestly, they're all high quality cameras, and I don't think that you can really go wrong with any of them. For me personally, I use a combination of cameras depending on what I'm gonna shoot. Now, to be honest, the iPhone is my go-to camera just because it's always the one that I have with me. It captures most of my casual photos and B-roll or my supplementary videos, but I often wish that I had a point and shoot like the Sony with me for getting high quality zoom shots because I'm not really happy with the zoom quality in the iPhone. When it comes to vlogging, I still use an action camera because of the style of vlogging that I do. I'm often walking and talking or I'm running around after my toddler, so I need the best in-camera stabilization possible. And I also appreciate the fact that it's waterproof and crush-proof because I do end up dropping the camera quite a bit, I have to admit. Now the DJI Pocket 3 is the newest to me of all of these cameras, and I'm still kind of figuring out where my filming workflow it fits, but it is 100% the go-to pick for any low light shooting and any times when I need a gimbal, like doing motion time lapses. Like I pretty much won't get a gimbal for my other cameras, I will just use the Pocket 3 from now on. But you guys let me know what you think in the comments below based on the footage that you've seen and some of the points that I've made in this video. Uh, let me know any questions or your thoughts and comments and let me know which of these cameras is most appealing for you. I would love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Stay tuned because I do have deep dives of pretty much all of these cameras. If they're not already out, then they are coming soon. And I also have accessory guides. So check the links below to see those videos.